today i have taken this opportunity to speak to you all on a very important topic of happiness and life what does that mean happiness at life is primarily an by product of leading through excellence and thereby being natural simple and humane so the question is very important and pertinent we all actually in the life we all have lots of questions every day every moment as to what does a life want or you want in the life what would be the ultimate desire at life and that is where i have made a mention as to what should be the desire well it might come to the mind of every one of us sometimes is money sometimes relationship sometimes success sometimes growth smaller issues of life every day's issues but finally what actually it gives it gives happiness or a joy contentment but the final word which i have selected which is not nothing is beyond that is the happiness so what actually you desire at life one word is the happiness second is that when it is at life at every stage of life we all desire that happiness why do we desire well this is a very important question as to how do i design my life the purpose to the life what direction i want to give it life we will see through later on that we all were born similar but the purpose or the question why makes all of us different and how do we do it how is very important people or we all might desire design everything think but the way actually we move across process it that is the how and all these issues are remaining relatedness to each other happiness not is in unison if i see something i feel happy there are basic four of existence and that i call it first is the life second is the happiness third is the excellence the process and the leadership and this i would like to explain it in a more detail the basic four the first one is the life itself okay and what is a life we must understand it is just a blessing from somewhere you and me do not know it's not our outcome we were blessed to take the birth so birth and death phenomena between two is the life or between two breaths is the life which is not in my control okay and that's why i said it's a blessing if it was i was blessed to be in this earth as part of this life what am i here for this needs to be felt there is need to be given a meaning or a direction it is dynamic at every stage of life so we are just a carrier of this life or this phenomena this consciousness feeling or the thoughts which are there they are very very intricately linked to our lifestyle but my point is that be natural and simple it's not at all complicated and this is my experience i'm sure the more simpler more natural we remain in our life in our thought processes i think our goal or direction remains in our control from here i take you on to the happiness what i desire so from life let me take you to the most important question of happiness we all know it is the feeling what you feel it is an emotional state it is primarily a mindset it is very dynamic it is what we observe we think it is linked to there but we all understand that it is not related to the quantum of event big event or small event a small example here if you are just sitting on a river side in a pleasant mood that's very important and you are watching river flowing or the water flowing i think you feel sometimes happy divine so that's the feeling or emotional state of mind or mindset which i was referring to so how from life we are wanting to achieve happiness but what are those incidents or events which we try to get the happiness from so from here i actually lead on to the excellences in life and those excellences are basically the designs the milestones or what i was mentioning the direction to the life or meaning to the life but these might sound little bigger words let's not get confused excellence as i described the phenomena of you sitting and watching and observing the pleasantness of river flowing is also a design at that moment that is also an event that's also a thought and thought generating is also an action though 
when you have considered something you need to execute to get on to your milestones and to reach where you wish to be, which will finally give you dividends of happiness. So this is not related to small event or a big event. It's a matter of feeling. And from here, how do we actually achieve this? The process is simple. The way you think naturally, the way you plan, the way you vision everything is so natural. Sometimes in life, whenever we are wanting to give out any issues, and that more so in uh, this experience I'm talking from the part of my military life, it is nothing to be that this particular style I need to adopt, this style I need to adopt. It is that situation which I want from my thought, from my existence, for my excellence, or that design for that day, or, or design for one week ahead. And that's what I just say that what should I do for the best out of it? And that's what it includes integrity, courage, determination, devotion. I think that's what the characteristics of good leadership is. Visioning. So I would like to put it across that the process is again very important, but let it not be given a terminologies. You just perform your job. Let others give a name to your leadership style. So these are very basic four of existence, life, happiness, excellence or milestones and the processes of leadership. So happiness is life is a byproduct of designed and felt excellence. This is attained through inspirational and a balanced leadership initiatives. So from here, I would like to take you a small experiential journey of my life as to how this, all these four phenomena have actually made me think in that happiness at life tone. I was in class four and the class teacher gave an example, you know, to write a letter to father. And that letter was written something as to what you want to achieve in life. And I remember very clearly that I had written a letter that I wanted to join Indian Army and maybe live for my motherland. I think somewhere that way, it was at that in class four or five, it was love for the nation. And the duty for which my father was away, my own duty, my mother's duty. So this is how the life starts unfolding. You actually start, start becoming conscious and that naturalness remains embodied to you. So after this, Around 20 years of age, I was in college. I was a science graduate. And my dream desire was to become a research scholar in microbiologist. Well, here I appear for an exam. I clear it. And I joined Indian Military Academy. Now, now there is a change. How it was happening? There is something which is inbuilt. And that is how it was moving. After one and a half years, 18 months of rigorous training to become an army officer, it actually embodied the military culture in mind. And everything was modified and changed. You became a leader. You became a man. The day I joined academy, overnight, you were baptized and you started talking. Baptization of overnight is a clause which I would like to put it across to everyone. The next day morning, if someone asks, what's your name? I dare not say I'm Jayant Tiwari. I would only say I'm gentleman cadet. Jayan Tiwari. So you see, the camaraderie, <clears throat> the team spirit of being into very difficult moments in that night or those nights put us together. But at the end of the day, let me tell you, we all sat down and we laughed it out. We really enjoyed every bit of it. The pain in our bodies we never existed. Probably it was the strengthening in our hearts and minds. From there, one of the incidences, we moved to a peacekeeping mission in Sri Lanka. I was newly married. And there I was a young officer, and well, that was a combat zone. I think it further nurtured. I was with my own team. We used to be having movements, encounters, contacts, you name it. We never felt awkward, afraid, fearful. There was a chance to just go in. I think that's the life, how it was built up, the training which was built up. There was a possibility syndrome which had developed. It is not that you are not in love with your wife who was behind. But yes, that happiness possibility syndrome, it exists and that military culture remains. So from here, I take you to when I was around 29 years in year 90, I was, on a, I was on leave in my state. And I suddenly see on a district hospital when I was passing through on my bike, that on the porch of the district hospital, on a rickshaw, there was an old couple holding their young boy, maybe around 26, 27 years. 
and he was in ble bleeding. And that's the time I realized that no one was helping him out, whole lot of crowd was there. I just stopped my bike, went, shouted to the people, went on to the rickshaw, pulled up that boy, went to the emergency and dropped him. Maybe uh, this was a training from the army. I went back, people started looking, I went back home, my mother saw blood on my sh shoulders, on my shirt, and she said, what happened? I said, oh, this is what has happened. In the late in the afternoon, this point was trickling in my mind. I told my mom that let me go back to the district hospital and check whether that boy or man was alive or not. When I went back and I checked up, they said this man is alive, he's in senses. And when I went and saw him, his parents were sitting next to him and that <clears throat> man was in drips. And the lady, his mother, was talking that your life was given by some divine structure. And that divine structure is that there was a man out of blue came up. He just lifted you and dropped you. And after that, I kept searching for him. He was never to be seen. I just could not approach that lady. I just stood there and I just turned about and moved away. I said, let them have that feeling that there is a supreme power. There is a positivity in life and everything will happen for the good. So I think this is how uh, the life developed in a very, very positive way where I got my Shaurya Chakra. This is the third highest gallantry award in India, which is given by the President of India himself, personally. And this was an encounter on top of a mountain in a thick jungle. I was leading a team after a search and destroy mission, and we came in contact. And out of 12 foreign mercenaries, nine were eliminated. I was badly wounded. And uh, well, it was well accomplished. And I was, uh, as a soldier, probably I felt happy that I was recognized for this particular action for exemplary leadership and courage. And from there, well, one keeps moving from various assignments, staff duties, we call it, where we sit down on desk and work. I feel proud in saying that I have to my credit of revising a path-breaking policies in the Army when I was in the rank of major in Army headquarters. So it feels good, which actually gave out a lot of pluses and happiness or um, satisfaction to the officers. I was posted in UN mission Iraq in 1998, and I was the post commander on Basra Highway. There were two incidents happened. One was that post was fired upon in the night, and one of my observers was injured. I, if I rightly remember, he was Korean or Singaporean, and I was the post commander. And people were afraid that, you know, Iraqis hooligans will probably intercept around 10 to 12 kilometers of border with Kuwait, I just lifted him, put him into my vehicle, and drove to the border where other forces were waiting. And force commander was a little surprised. He said, come on, how could you come like this? I said, so don't worry. These are not no actions as far the Indian Army is concerned. And there was a visit of a diplomat in nine years of that mission. It, was, it went off very well. And the diplomacy probably played up. Uh, I just acted the way I was trained. I was posted in a northeastern state of India where a lot of pineapple is grown. We eat pineapple through the leaves. I thought and got in touch, fortunately, because there was a consciousness as to why this, can I use this, can I use this? That is the consciousness, that is the naturalness, that is the simplicity which I'm talking about. I was in operation, I was in a combat zone, but still these thoughts were existing. I tried to collect tribal women who will not face, who will not face me to stand in front of me. Yeah, and the tribal women were collected, and this was a unique project in India, first time done, extracting fiber leaves. And from there, I moved on, I retired from army, and after that, you know, my venture as, as a leader, coach, and a mentor started. So I want to bring it out. Actually, if you see, it was clearly in three parts, and the natural way, happiness at life. It moved on as a military culture embodied, possibility zone, exploration, and the empowerment zones were clear. One was at the army, second was the awareness domain where I was wanting to do the microbiology and today I'm studying cell functioning and human care. That's very important. So a life journey is building up your consciousness in a natural phenomenon. I would like to stress on a point that thinking creates manifest life. So create happiness by thinking. Uh, okay, so from here I would like to move on to the another areas of giving a little nutshell of entire things. 
The happiness is an emotional state, a mindset. It's dynamic. Create it. Life is a blessing. Design with a direction. Next is lead to secure excellences in life. Whatever you desire. Excellences do not get overawed by bigger or smaller. Smaller issues make bigger differences. Awareness and mindfulness is predominant to factors for oneness or happiness. As a soldier, let me tell you, the mindfulness is very core to me. When I am engaged in an encounter, let no thought come to my mind. I have to be there. So highest degree of mindfulness is exercised by a combat soldier. The process is the leadership. More natural and more humane you are, more inspiring and effective you will be. Thinking creates, create and nurture the thinking. Consciousness paradigm, I feel that this is the ultimate for any human being. This is the ultimate characteristic. Nurture it. Be the way you are naturally designed to be. So certain of my engagements, which I share to serve, I try to secure consciousness, abundance, and uniqueness, and I assist people in creating value-inspired destiny. The methodology is to evolve, empower, excel, and ensure leadership at life. Through coaching, mentorship, and speaking engagements. From there, I engage securing uniqueness, simplicity, naturalness, and leading to empowerment. So at the end, I would like to culminate by saying, be happiness or be happy at life. And I would like to ex extend my gratitude to the DLC community and especially to Mr. Jimmy Mistry for a wonderful platform. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.